Hello everyone. In this webinar, we're going to talk about sign, shock, and random vibration tests and the advanced features. So we're hoping to make it interesting and worthwhile. So here in the first slide, you can see uh, the main topics of today's webinar. We will talk about the need of vibration testing, its application spheres, and of course, we will discuss sign, random, and shock tests with the advanced features. Uh, and today I'm going to show some of the new features for the upcoming release. And I think we can start. Uh, first of all, why do we need to perform vibration tests? In general, we need to perform this test to find structural durability of our object, analyze it, discover its behavior in different conditions. Uh, we can apply vibration tests in multiple engineering spheres. Here in the slide, you can see the most common of them, it's automotive, aerospace, packaging. Of course, you can use vibration testing in durability analysis, structural design. And now it's really uh, interesting and modern, uh, the way you can replicate real life events. So um, now uh, this is uh, the main three topics we're going to talk today. It's sign, uh, random and shock test. And let's talk a little bit about our today's equipment. We are using regular Rural C21 controller, our Rural A200 amplifier, and we have uh, a shaker, and on its shaker stable, we have a beam with three accelerometers. Here you can see the picture. We have our system build, and I think now I can enable the camera. Oh, it's me, hello. Uh, let me change the camera. So now you can see my setup. And now I think we can continue in our software and our first topic will be sign test. Here, uh, we need to firstly create uh, a new channels configuration. So we go to configuration tab and select channels here. Let's add a configuration. Let's call it webinar. Uh, today we have three accelerometers. On the first channel, we have 10 millivolts per G IEP accelerometer. So you see it here. On the uh, second and the third channel, we have two other accelerometers. They have sensitivity of 10 millivolts per G and they are also IP type. Uh, so we don't use the fourth channel. We will disable it during the test setup and we have one active output. Now let's go to the main tab and create the first test. The first test will have a uh, really easy uh, profile. We will go through the series of frequencies and we'll find the resonances and use this information later uh, in the second and the third profile. So our starting frequency is 10 hertz and our start amplitude is 0 0.5 G. We are going to have uh, there are 30 hertz and, uh, and frequency and we're making the profile with a straight line. After that we go to schedule and here we have our basic run profile command. After that we go to limits, check our shaker and in channels check our configuration. Here we have webinar, we disable the fourth channel and I need to say that we have the control sensor on the second channel because it's placed uh, on the shaker stable, not on the beam's ends. So we're going to get um, the straight signal from our controller. Uh, the first and the third channel are measuring. Now we can apply the settings.
and here you see our profile picture. After that, I need to turn up again on the amplifier. I set the value to 50%, and now we can run the test. Let's start it. Here you see that we have some high amplitudes on our beams uh, sides. Here you see it. And here we have a resonance. It's about 12 hertz. And during this uh, test run, we need to find this frequency and I'll show you how to work with this information later during um, your tests. So our main goal here was to find this frequency, so we did it and now we can stop the test and show you some more complex examples. We stop the test and after that we go back to our test settings and Firstly, we will uh, create a complicated schedule. We will create cycles, some other different command types. And uh, we have a common question about can we repeat some uh, frequency generation during one test? Yes, we can. We have a special command here. It's called cycles. So, so here we set start cycle command. After that, we add two commands in it. And the final command and cycle is repeat cycle. And here in the text box, you can enter the number uh, of um, your cycle iterations. So today we are going to make two iterations. Um, sometimes you need to generate uh, some exact frequencies during uh, the test or some kind of research and for this purpose we have a command which is called hold frequency here you enter the desired frequency value here you enter the level you can set it in different um, measurements and after that you enter the duration so we find out the, we found out that we have a resonance frequency of 12 hertz we enter it here and we're going to hold this frequency for 10 seconds. After that, uh, we want to go uh, right from some kind of frequency. For example, uh, we want to go right from 15 hertz. And that means that for this time period, we're going to make a sweep with the starting frequency of 15 hertz. And we're going to go right for another 10 seconds. After that, uh, I add another interesting command, which is called wait for user command. Uh, that means that uh, the test and its execution will be stopped uh, until uh, the user or an engineer presses the button, which will be shown in the screen. After that, we'll perform another command which is widely used in automotive uh, it's called step sweep here we enter the starting frequency and the end frequency like in regular sweep but we have a special panel for uh, these command settings so we are going to run from 10 hertz up to 15 hertz we're going to make start and start sweep one time and to set the settings, we go to step-by-step -step test. And here, firstly, we need to set time relations. We have step and pause. Step means uh, the time for generating the frequency and pause um, is the time between the generations. Uh, after that, we need to set the step. Here we have our regular linear step of one hertz. 
here we will set 10 seconds and we'll have a five seconds pause and that means that going through this command we will generate uh, firstly 10 hertz for 10 seconds after that we're going to make uh, a five seconds pause uh, after that we're going to increase our frequency value by one hertz uh, and repeat all this process of generation so uh, we can work on every frequency uh, in the step sweep command after that we apply the settings and press ok uh, the best graph for visualization of the data is exploration versus time. Here you will see all the stop ups, pauses, and so on. So I start the test. And here you see that here we have our 12 hertz. We're holding this frequency. Here we're working with this frequency our control channel is going straight to the profile line and here we had our resonance after that we're starting up at 50 uh, 15 uh, hertz and here you see that we're going some time here and we have a frequency change here. Now in cycle we go back to the whole frequency um, and using this complex schedule we have a special panel for this. It's called test progress. Here you can see uh, the completed time, left time for the test um, and uh, the current command is highlighted. So you see that now we are going back to go right from here we have a timer and you can see uh, how much time is left for this test run now as i mentioned earlier we have uh, a waiting for user response window uh, and there is no generation uh, until i press this button so i continue and let's go back to acceleration versus time and here you see that we started to generate here we are running at 10 hertz now we see that the test is paused And now we're at 11 hertz frequency. Our frequency cursor is placed here now. And in this way, we're going to go through all the frequency row that I set previously in the schedule. And uh, now, while we're running, I will describe a new feature. Uh, we implemented some new graph types. Uh, they are all real-time drawing, but, uh, and they are based on some kind of analysis. For sign test, we have a cross plot. Here it will be when we will go on the frequency. Here you see it. Uh, in cross plot in its settings, you can set the base channel and two other channels, um, and this data will be uh, based on this channel's data. On uh, random and uh, shock test, I will show you another four new graph types. Uh, we implemented FREF phase, FREF amplitude we implemented cross spectral amplitude and now we can draw coherence so now let's go to 
to our control panel, stop the test, and I'll show you another feature which is called notching. Here in the test settings, I go to schedule, remove all these commands, and set sweep from Oh, sorry, I forgot I need to change a profile a bit. Uh, we'll add another line. And here we will start from 5 Hz, 1 millimeter amplitude. We will go up to 15.76 Hz with the 1G amplitude. Here we change it also, and we're going to 100 hertz. And here I can press calculate point of intersection, change the frequency a bit. Uh, and after that, in schedule, I set the sweep from 5 to 50 hertz. And we will perform the sweep four times. That means uh, that we're going through 5 hertz to 15 hertz and then back to 5 four times. After that, we go to limits tab and here we find notch limits. Uh, we can set lower and upper limits for our channels. And uh, this settings is used when you have some kind of uh, complicated object, for example, some uh, lone objects like we have, have here today. And as you saw, we have to re we have resonances on the beam ends and we need to avoid high amplitudes on these channels. Uh, so on the first and the third channel, we add limit in decibels at uh, four decibels. Uh, on our graphs we will have an additional line which is placed uh, five decibels up from our profile and when uh, the signal from these channels goes up uh, than these lines, uh, we'll, our system will decrease um, the test level and try to lower the signal that uh, these channels don't go higher than these values. Also, you can set uh, the lower limits. Uh, and now uh, we have also the main profile limits like shown here. Uh, and when we run such test, because we have not really high amplitudes, um, you will see why we implemented a new feature which is called Disable Lower Abort while using Notch. Uh, so let's apply the settings. Here, let's start the test. Uh, this dotted line is our notching limit, it's upper limit, here you see it. And this line uh, will show you when, will show you a message when we cross it with our control channel here in the log. And while we cross this line or this red dotted line, the test will stop. So we are starting up. Here we are running and our two channels on the ends are running really closely to this line. Uh, and uh, here when they cross this line, the level will lower and you'll see it on the graph right in a few seconds. Here you see that we're going all over frequency row, but we decreased our amplitude. And using this feature, we'll cross this line at about 10 hertz or 
something like that. Here you see that our um, control channel crossed um, this line. So here we see messages and now we crossed this red line. So the test is stopped. Our system thinks that we can damage our object, but uh, we know that we can run such tests because our um, control channel is placed right on the uh, shaker stable. We're getting uh, the correct signal. So here we press no. After that, we go to test settings and enable our new feature, disable lower board line. We press yes. And that means that during the test run, our control channel will ignore this red line and continue to run. So we start again. And we need some time for the startup. We have really low amplitude, so it can take some time. I'll open oscilloscope. And now I think we can check for the questions. Yeah, Philip, I'm sorry for interrupting, but uh, while uh, the test is running, there is uh, one question, the first question. So the question is, what will happen if the upper and lower notching limits are activated simultaneously? Uh, in our software, we will activate the upper limit. Um, so we tested this a lot and decided that uh, we will enable on the only uh, the upper limit. So we will decrease um, the level. And here you see that we are running now. Here we will see that our frequencies will cross this line. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, startup at such amplitudes and frequencies can take some time. And here we crossed this line, we are lowering the level. And we crossed this line, but we have no messages because we disable it. And here we've also disabled this. So you can see that we crossed this line, we lowered the level, but we're still running the test. Our beam is shaking. And in that case, we can work on resonances. Here you see. It's a really useful feature uh, and I think um, maybe we will add it to other tests. And so here you see as our two channels on the beam lowered the signal, uh, the control channel is rising here and we ended our sweep. Now we are going to lower the level again. And in such way, you can work on resonances using sign. Uh, and uh, you don't need to worry then that you will damage uh, your shaker object or something like that. It's a really useful feature. Now, I think we can continue with another test type. We're going to talk a little bit about random.
and our first example uh, will be um, used for uh, finding the resonance using the random profile. For example, you have some kind of an object, but you need to find the resonances quickly. You don't need to dwell and track them. So you need to, uh, you only need to know these frequencies. In that case, we'll create a test. We will run from 10 hertz up to 200 hertz. Here I enter the required amplitude. We will also have 0.5G, press recalculate. Here we have our profile. And we know that our resonance frequency is placed at 12 hertz. So uh, we'll get it in the graph. Here in the schedule, we have our run command. We will run for one minute. In limits, we have our regular shaker. And here we set our webinar configuration, change the control channel and disable the fourth one. After that, I apply the settings. And we can continue. Let's run the test. Uh, and here on the spectrum density versus frequency graph, we will see our resonance frequency. Let's wait for the startup. Here you see our signals. Now we are running our random test. Let's add the frequency cursor. And here you see the data on the second channel and now on the uh, on the first and the third channel is higher and here we have our resonance frequencies and here we have a spectrum decrease and after that let's change settings a bit we'll go from five hertz we set again our required amplitude, apply the settings, and start the test again. Uh, I decided to set the lower start frequency because our resonance will be more visible in that case. And after that, I'll show you how to manage with resonances on the random test. So let's wait for startup. And here you see that here at 10 Hertz, we have a resonance, we have a decrease on our channel here on the second channel. So uh, we found a resonance using random and now we're going to work with it. So we stop the test, go to test settings and also in limits we have machine 
and here we will set up a limit for our channels at the beam ends. We set the limit as two decibels. And apply the settings. Here you see this red dotted line and we run the test. So here you see the spectrum. The test will be started now. And you see that our system is decreasing the level and these resonances will be gone now. We're filtering them, and now these two peaks on the graph are below this notching level. Um, we stop this test, and I'll show you another interesting feature in random. Uh, I think it should be used more widely. It's uh, a nice way. Uh, to turn your uh, time domain date recording into a random test. So uh, we go to test settings and before we create a profile, let's disable our notching. And in profile, we have a special button which is called Spectrum Input. We press it. And here we have a spectrum input window. Uh, here we can select some uh, text data, some tables, some sound files, if you don't have date recording. But I have a recorded uh, road shaking. Um, uh, we asked our colleagues from uh, delivery company to let us record some road shaking. And here I have a file, and I'll go back to presentation. Here you have the accelerogram of this file. It's uh, about 100 seconds. It's our real shaking. And here we have different input methods. We can hold the peaks or average the signal. We, will, we can cut off some values lower than uh, we set. After that, we can set window settings here, set uh, the number of profile lines, calculate or and select overlapping parameter for window functions. And if we have multiple channels, uh, we can select the channel we want to use for the profile. And here on the left side, you can see the profile duration, its sample rate, samples number, maximum acceleration values, and the sensitivity of uh, the sensor which was used to get the data. Um, I want to have 7,000 profile lines and Today I'm not going to set any other window type um, parameters. So here I press calculate spectrum. Here on the graph you can see the calculated spectrum. And after that I input this profile into the profile tab into the settings. There is a message that your current profile will be overwritten. And the profile creation takes some time. And there is another question. So 
will there be a feature in the spectrum input that will allow you to set the initial and final frequency of the profile? Uh, yeah, that's, I wanted to talk about this. Here you see that after we calculated the profile, we have this low starting frequency, and here in the end we have this frequency. Uh, some of our customers asked about uh, the way you can set um, the start and end frequencies during uh, the spectrum input. And I want to say that soon we will have this feature and this in this window uh, you'll be able to select the start and frequency. So now you have to cut um, the frequencies you don't want to use manually, but in the upcoming release, we'll have this feature. So as I mentioned, I need to delete some frequencies here. I want to cut the frequencies up to 10 Hertz. So I select them and press the delete button. And after that, I want to have my Final frequency as 1000 Hertz. I find this line. Here. Sorry, I misclicked. I select all these frequencies and press delete. After that, I can apply the settings. And here, in a few seconds, you'll see a new profile. Here you see it. Um, after that, I check the channels and we are ready to run the test. We're starting off, and while we're starting up, I want to mention that in random test we have another interesting feature. We had a special webinar about it. It's called uh, fatigue damage spectrum. Uh, in that way, you can replicate some long time events um, in a shorter time period. It's widely used and uh, if you are interested in it, uh, watch our previous webinars and you can ask us and we will make another webinar about this. We also have a video on our YouTube channel about this feature. And let's go back to our profile. Here you see that we find we found another resonances, our regular about 12 hertz at 23 hertz. We have another peak at 34 hertz. And uh, I think we're not interested in the right side of the profile. So Uh, so in this way, you can replicate your real life events, recorded data using the random test and um, perform these vibration tests. And now we are going to our final part of the webinar. We're going to discuss our shock test. Uh, let's create a new test. Uh, you know that in many different standards like MIL STD or something like that, uh, mainly used as half sign, but today we're going to create a triangle shock. Uh, it will have longer pulse duration. We will set it to 30 milliseconds. 
and its amplitude will be 2G. After that, we go to schedule and here I'll show you some ways you can create shock tests. We are going to have four commands here. The first one will perform two or sorry, 10 regular shocks. Uh, after that, we'll perform another 10 shocks, but we'll set a long period between the shocks. After that, we can invert the shock. And finally, I'll set huge amount of shocks for this command we will perform uh, the final shock command, turning the manual mode during the runtime. So here I will see a message. Sorry, it's okay. After that, go to channels, select our configuration, set the second channel as control, disable the fourth channel. And here we also have our brand new feature. We can apply a frequency filter for every channel. For example, here on this channel, I want to have uh, only from 10 up to 30 hertz frequencies on my spectrum graph here. I want to filter the frequencies from 5 hertz up to 100 hertz. You can also apply it to the control channel. Uh, and I need to say that um, here you can select multiple control channels. For example, for, if we had um, not a beam but something like uh, a metal plate which is uh, placed on the shaker stable. We can set multiple control sensors, set the coefficients and control the system uh, collecting the data from all the sensors. And now let's go to the service table and uh, now in shock test we can also calculate the SRS graph SRS data. So we enable use SRS table and here we need to select our start and frequency. For example, I want to calculate it from 10 hertz up to 1000 hertz. And our start amplitude will be 0 0.5. And here we will have also the same value. We and misclicked. After that, we can make the SRS calculations. Here we enable this tab, and after that, we check our shaker and our channels. Now we are ready to apply the settings and press OK. Now you see that we have our SRS versus frequency graph enabled and we can run the test. Let's open this progress panel and place it here. Uh, the startup is complete, so I need to confirm that we want to start this test. Let's open our spectrum versus frequency graph. Uh, I think we can make three graphs for the first channel. Here you see that we filtered these frequencies. And for the third channel. Also, our filter is applied. Uh, now we are making shocks with 
a long period between them. Let's create another SRS versus frequency. So here you see that here we have our SRS profile and the SRS is calculated. Here you see the lines. Now we're going really near to our inverted shock. Here you see that the profile is inverted. Here we had an emergency stop. That's okay. So I stop the test. Go back to test settings. In the schedule, I disable the, and delete these commands. Or do we have any questions? Yes, we do. What tasks can multiple sensors be controlled? Uh, now we have uh, this feature only in sign random. Um, sign on random and I think we implemented this feature and in all shock tests like SRS, shock and TTH. And we have another question. Yes, we have one more question. If there are two sensors on the control of impact and they are in the opposite phase, then what will happen? Um, I think uh, I have an answer for this question. Um, personally, I didn't test it such kind of a setup, but um, uh, if I remember uh, this startup um, uh, this setup won't start up because this uh, phase but, but you can go to channels and invert the channels so you'll get the correct data um, I'll talk about this with my colleagues and if you wish I will send you a more detailed answer uh, I think now we can continue with this test here, let's set no manual mode, apply the settings, start the test, and we'll make some shock series, and I'll uh, set it in manual mode rightly in the runtime. So I set manual mode. So I press this button and our system performs a shock. After that, I disable it and the system continues to perform shocks and I think it's really useful feature when you need to analyze uh, every shock we collected. Uh, let's stop the test and I'll describe some more interesting features that we have uh, in this test type. They are placed in the control tab. Uh, and here we have two interesting options. The first one is called use safe drive. Uh, that means that uh, if we need to perform a series of identical shock tests using the same equipment, using the same test profile, we can perform uh, one test without enabling this feature. And then we need to perform the second test or the third one. We press this and we use the calculated uh, spectrum and the response from the um, uh, our system and in that case we can decrease the startup time for your setup. Also we have a single shock option. If you enable it uh, we are not going to make any shocks during the startup. The calculation in the startup will be longer but if you have a small series of shocks like three uh, you can enable this um, and the system won't make any calibrational shocks uh, during the startup. 
also uh, if you want to minimize uh, uh, the startup time uh, you can perform a series of tests find out um, the voltage which is generated on the output channel of our system and here you can enable set initial drive enter this value here and this voltage value will be used as a start voltage uh, during the startup so you can um, decrease uh, the time during the startup but you must be really careful with this feature um, and you need to double check it while you enter it and let's double check the uh, questions yes uh, one of our participants uh, is uh, asking if we have negative and positive srs um, no we don't have it in srs and the srs parameters but i think it will be in the upcoming release we're developing it right now and um i think there'll, there will be some more features for srs and regular tests like shock and tth and i think now we can go back to our presentation and so we talked about different vibration tests which are applied in many different engineer spheres we talked about um, um, the features of sign random and shock uh, the ability to be extended uh, i showed you some useful features during the tests uh, showed how to extend the basic functionality of these tests and i talked about some more features in the upcoming release and i need to say that today i used um, uh, a preliminary version of our software so it has some uh, new features um, and we're working on it and i think um, i covered uh, some part of these features uh, if you are interested in some of them write us we can describe it to you and now i think uh, we're done with uh, sign random and shock and let's check the questions again yeah, and now the attendees so thank you for your attention and thank you for your questions uh oh yeah just one one more question is it possible to conduct a series of tests sequentially uh, we have multiple ways you can do it for example um if you have uh, only one test, as I mentioned, you can prevent cycles in your schedule for some uh, series of actions. But, uh, for example, if you need to perform uh, sign, random, and shock in one series of tests during one test run, here, uh, let me check. We have uh, the option which is called sequence of tests. Uh, in the settings, you select the files for these tests, but uh, you need to know that all the setup, shaker, settings, channels must be identical for all these tests, and you can't change the configuration. So, for example, um, as I showed today, I can't use all my uh, sign random and short profiles because they have the same channel configuration the same shaker and in this case I can enter the sequence of tests and here I can run the test find the file find the duration of this test we can show the log and in that way you can perform really complicated uh, test series which will cover all the leaks. Uh, so I think I answered your question. So 